What's up, guys? Um, saw some people talking online the other day about uh, possibly, you know, uh, recording experiments and submitting them to some sort of university and having them look at it and stuff like that. And I know um, a lot of people in this field are, are self-taught, and uh, that's great. Um, it's wonderful, actually. But there are a few things that uh, you have to comply with. Keeping a scientific notebook, a scientific journal of your experiments is very important. I don't keep it for half the stuff that I work on, but if something happened that I liked, I would obviously start writing it down. That's what you gotta do, and I'm sure, you know, that's obviously you would all do that. Anyway, what I have out right here is just my uh, scientific journal for my uh, physics class that I'm in right now. And I just wanted to go over a few th fundamental details. Um, they're basically just things that you will not be considered if you don't follow these two simple rules and maybe some guidelines. So now, uh, basically, if I was, if I discovered something in my physics class, obviously, I'm just running experiments for learning purposes. But if I were, were to, to uh, discover something and it was recorded in this notebook, I could not turn it in. It would not, I, it would not be peer review, peer reviewed. It would be worthless. And uh, the reason that is is because this is all in pencil. It's all in pencil. Great for you know when you're in the classroom, but. Uh, when you're filling out your lab books, don't ever use pencil. You gotta use pen. Always, always, always use pen. Now the second thing, uh, right there uh, looks like I erased something. That's a big no-no. Uh, you can't do that. You cannot erase anything in a lab book. Um, you gotta cross it out. You gotta start over. And basically, if you fill out one of these uh, booklets correctly for your research, you will, it, it basically becomes a bonding document. It's, um, you know, you go to apply for a patent or you go to do anything with the technology. Uh, it's a bonding document and it says that you actually did this stuff on this date. Um, oh, another important factor... Okay, this is this would be the end of the lab. This is a start of a second experiment here. But you can see here, I signed it. I have the date, and then I have a witness signature and date. Uh, that's something you're going to have to have if you want to uh, have a real lab booklet. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, I, uh, I did this back. I did this uh, two years ago, and I'm still working on it, so I came up with it first. Fortunately, it doesn't work like that. Now, of course, you want to go with the scientific method, make hypotheses, make predictions, write about what actually happens, show everything. Uh, that's the best way to go. And um, I feel like we got to start getting into a lot more documentation in this field. And, you know, sometimes it's hard because there can be a lot of percent error and it's not really peer-reviewed. And we're all using different things that are similar. But um, I would like to see people start... Uh, using a lot more, a lot more of the pen, and uh, I'm going to do that as well, maybe, maybe someone will follow if I do, maybe, probably not, but uh, I just wanted to go over that stuff in case you were thinking about it, in case you already are and you're filling it out um, improperly, it's not going to be worth anything, so uh, those are my tips to do it. And uh, I hope you learned something from this video. Maybe you knew it already. Maybe you know, you know, you're like, oh, what is this guy talking about? He missed like five things. Anyway, uh, good luck, and uh, I hope the best.